Today's lesson is on identifying cells um, based on what phase they're in, what process they're in, and identifying the haploid and diploid number for the organism that is shown in the different cells. So what I've done is I've put together some pictures of different randomized cells with different numbers of haploid and diploid, different phases in no particular order. Before you can achieve this skill, you have to go back into a drawing that you've drawn of a mitosis process and um, a process where you've done meiosis from start to finish and be able to analyze each phase for the following. You have to know is that phase a haploid or diploid phase and then you have to kind of look for general key um, differences between those that have the same haploid or diploid variation. I'm going to go through this for example. Let's look at cell A right here and the general idea here is that I have chromosomes lined up at the equator. That's very indicative of a metaphase. That's usually not the hard part for students to recognize the more generic phase. The hard part for students is the process. So we have three different metaphases that you have talked about. We've got metaphase of mitosis, we have metaphase one of meiosis, and we have metaphase two of meiosis. So the, the big key is looking at the generic idea of these. Mitosis goes from one cell to two cells. It starts as a diploid cell and both daughter cells in the end are also diploid. So nothing changes in terms of that. So for example, if you had 46 chromosomes as a human does, in the end of mitosis, each cell also has 46. And that might be um, hard for students to grasp because they would think that if I start with one and end with two, I should have 23 and 23. But that's not the process of the cell cycle. The chromosomes replicate and then divide after they replicated their cells. So that's why we can achieve 46 and 46. For a human going through meiosis, there are two rounds of meiosis. There is meiosis 1. And then each cell at the end of meiosis 1 also divides so that we have four cells in the end and that would be identified as meiosis 2. So there's a metaphase over here, there's a metaphase in this section, and there's a metaphase in this section. For meiosis, you start as diploid, but if you looked at your notes, you should have been able to do this. If not, this is a skill you have to kind of develop. You have to be able to look and say that this cell, at the end of meiosis 1, this telophase cell, slash cytokinesis cell, that is actually a haploid nucleus. This is also a haploid. So what I can do is, once I've determined haploid or diploid, I can somewhat eliminate at least one choice. So for example, metaphase. Metaphase can either be here. If it's diploid, then it's still got a possibility that that metaphase could be in mitosis. Metaphase actually is also a diploid in meiosis 1. The hard part for students is knowing where's the cutoff. If we start with diploid and end with haploid, there has to be a cutoff. And that actually is Anaphase ends where it's diploid, and telophase, sorry, telophase starts where it's haploid. So that's kind of the line that you have to know. Everything south of this line would be haploid. So getting back to this picture, this is going to be a metaphase. Haploid or diploid, because the homologous chromosomes are matched up, it is going to be a diploid cell. So automatically, it cannot be meiosis too. I can eliminate that. So then I'm down to the choices of, well, is that a metaphase of mitosis? or metaphase of meiosis 1. The key is looking at the structures that line up at the equator. If you see the word tetrad or identify that you have a tetrad, tetrad is only a meiosis pick process. Tetrads don't form in mitosis, so this is actually metaphase meiosis 1. Now what's the haploid diploid number? Metaphase in meiosis 1 is diploid, so all I do is I count the number of replicated chromosomes I have. Not tetrads, I'm counting chromosomes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So my diploid or 2n number is 8. My haploid would have to be half of that, which is 4. That is an easier one for students to grasp later on in this idea. Letter, or letter B cell, this is a prophase. I see a nuclear membrane disappearing. I have some centrioles that are kind of migrating, so I know it's prophase. Now I look to see, is it haploid or diploid? Does this chromosome have its homologous match anywhere? No, 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 no. So this is a haploid cell. So I look back at my generic diagram here. This is prophase. That's diploid. So this picture cannot be a diploid 
um, process, so it can't be mitosis. This also, so for example, here are the numbers that it would be for a human. 46 you start, 23, 23, 23, 23, and 23. This is the prophase picture, kind of the beginning. That also is diploid. So I've eliminated, as soon as I know that this is haploid, there's only one type of prophase that is actually haploid, and that's prophase 2. What is the haploid number? It's easier to start with that since this cell is haploid. 1, 2, 3, 4, diploid 8. Letter C is a tough one for students. They know that it's anaphase, but the process, because students find it difficult to analyze if this is haploid or diploid. This chromosome right here, is its homologous match present anywhere in the cell? There it is. Same size, different shading, light, dark. So this is a diploid cell. So therefore, anaphase 2 is not an option because that's the anaphase that's haploid. Above this line, so this anaphase is diploid and this anaphase is diploid. So the difference becomes, well, let's look at the chromosomes. What's being pulled apart? In anaphase 1, you do not pull apart sister chromatids. In anaphase 1, you're separating, basically, it's the phase that would happen after this. If this is metaphase 1, this would not come after metaphase 1. This is separating sister chromatids. Anaphase 1 of meiosis would have separated these replicated chromosomes away from each other. So this is actually anaphase of mitosis. I will say that's a, a tough one for students because they can't identify diploid or haploid. I often tell students to take it back to the metaphase. If you can imagine these two back together at the equator, we would have a, an, a replicated chromosome that was dark and the same size replicated chromosome that was light. That's what makes it diploid. And for some reason, again, it just anaphase is difficult. So this is anaphase. Um, so what is the haploid diploid number? If I take it back, imagine this was back at metaphase, you would have had one replicated chromosome. There it is. I can literally do it. There it is. And then this one's just a little bit lighter. So I would have had two as my diploid number. And my haploid would be, I would only have one. Here's another metaphase. Again, I think these are easier. So what I do is I say, is this haploid or diploid? So I can say that this is meta phase. Let's identify this chromosome and this chromosome, the same size, different colors, so the homologous matches are present. And it basically is going in order. So this is a diploid. So which one can't this one be? It can't be metaphase 2 because meiosis 2 is completely haploid. So it's down to mitosis, meiosis 1. What lines up? Replicated chromosomes. That's the difference between these two diploid metaphases. This is replicated chromosomes. They are tetrads. So this is mitosis. What is the 2n number or diploid? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What is the haploid number? It is half of that or 5. Here's another tough one. This is telophase. That's not generally what students struggle with. But if we look at one nucleus, for telophase, put your finger on one nucleus. Is it homologous match present? Yes. Is it homologous match present? Um, yes. Is it present? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so this is diploid. This one's easy because telophase is below the line. Telophase in meiosis is haploid, and definitely telophase 2 is haploid. So the only telophase that is actually diploid is this process, mitosis. So this actually is telophase of mitosis. I'm asking myself the same questions, and that's what you have to just learn how to do. Look if it's haploid or diploid, and then refer to this. But this can't be something that you rely on. You have to be able to produce this on your own. So this is telophase of mitosis. I look at one nucleus only to determine its 2n value. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Diploid 8, haploid 4. Next one. Here I have a di disappearing nucleus. I didn't draw the centrioles, but that's really not too important to identify. But what I have, this is a disappearing nucleus. Chromosomes are arranged kind of haphazardly, so it's prophase. Is it diploid or haploid? Matches, matches. So this is diploid. So which prophase can it be? It's either prophase 1 or prophase of mitosis. Since they are not tetrads, by this point, 
tetrads would be formed in prophase one. So they are not prophase um, or tetrads. So therefore, this is prophase of mitosis. What is the 2n number? That is 1, 2, 3, 4. And now the haploid number would have to be half of that. Notice I always start with the number that this, the current cell is in. All right. So for example, up here, I've had a lot of diploids in a row. This is haploids. That's why I started with the haploid number and then went to diploid. But all these other ones have been diploid. So there's just a few. I thought that would kind of give you a good idea, but you'd have to be able to do that for all of them. So it's key to recognize haploid diploid. Then you look at the state of, is it tetrads? Is it replicated chromosomes? Or are they non-replicated chromosomes? That's really the second piece. And that tells you within the phase, is it meiosis one or mitosis? They're generally the two that get most confusing because they both have similarities in diploid. Meiosis two really is exclusive in that it's completely haploid. The only exception is this telophase. That's the only one that really has two options of haploid cells. Every other phase has two options of diploid and only one option of haploid. So if you can get it to haploid, then you kind of narrow it down with the exception, unfortunately, of telophase. So hopefully that helped. Um, you know, uh, let me know. <laughs>